Corvallis is home to OSU, and we have a lot of people that commute to and from during the morning hours. There'll be bikers, there'll be cars, there'll be pedestrians. Bikers' main means of communicating to people uh, are through hand signals. We have to use either right turn, left turn, or brake, requiring you to remove your hand from your brake handlebar which also is the spot where your front brake is located. As a result, reaction time is drastically uh, increased when it comes to avoidance of accidents. Our goal as a team is uh, to implement some sort of system that we can better implement communication to people around us without removing our hands from the handlebar. Another dilemma that a lot of bikers have uh, concerns security. Bike theft is huge in Corvallis, and we want to implement some sort of uh, security system, some sort of measurement to help prevent bike theft. So for our bike uh, project, we'll be using three different sensors. The first one is the accelerometer, the ADXL337 type, and uh, it is uh, used to detect the acceleration or the deceleration, uh, and we use it to activate our brake lights. The second uh, sensor is the general light dependent resistor sensor. It detects the amount of lumens and defines it if it is a night or a day. And the last sensor that we'll be using is the uh, FSR pressure sensor for O2. And uh, it senses the pressure on the grips for our turn signals. So after function is light signaling, uh, we inserted the force pressure sensor underneath the bikers and they're connected to the Arduino which is going to give a signal to turn on the light so if you want to turn right to squeeze the right grip and the light will turn on and same for the left one and if you want to give like a flashing light to squeeze both of them. The second system on our bike is the brake light system. The brake light system works using an accelerometer which detects the deceleration of the rider and it activates LEDs if it goes over the minimum braking threshold, like that. And one of them is burnt out, but this one is functioning. And that is the minimum threshold. If they go over the maximum braking threshold, they activate a flashing light response, which helps get attention from drivers behind them. The nice feature we have is a security system that's activated by pressing this button here. And then when the bike is jostled in a certain way, the alarm will go off. Now turn off the alarm, we'll press the button to deactivate the system. So as a team, we have decided to have a running light sensor because uh, um, we know that in Oregon it's required uh, for the bike to have a running light at night. And uh, it also reduces the uh, risk of uh, um, being uh, hit or uh, making an accident with, with the uh, car or uh, pedestrians so the running uh, light uh, will uh, reduce that risk and uh, it will help uh, other people to see that there is a bike rider. So one of the things we want to incorporate is having a self-contained system. Living in Oregon we know that rain is uh, a very big issue when it comes to electronics so we were able to um, laser cut some plexiglass and make a box um, through uh, just hot glue and simple physics. It's able to hold itself together and be self-contained. Also, it helps us make the system more portable and transferable between bikes. For our lights, we chose to have the sequential light pattern so that it captures attention better. Uh, it's also that everything can fit in one box and make our design more compact. The sensors we use is the accelerometer, which measures acceleration forces. It has low error and a sensitivity of 300 millivolt per g. Uh, the range is also suitable for our application because we'll never see The four sensor we use has low error and sensitivity rate. Its range is also applicable for our applications enough to sense if the person squeezed the grip. And the reaction time is less than 3 milliseconds, which is more than enough signals. LDR sensor, a light sensor, detects the amount of lumens 
the ripeness of the environment and change its resistive values based on how much light it receives. And so that helps us differentiate well, between day and night. Um, it also has very low error and to, to stop the bike. Um, the flashing was also working when uh, the brake was pressed uh, very high. And uh, the last feature that, that is working also is the uh, night uh, light that was always working at night with no issue. Um, so our light systems are really responsive as well. It's working as expected. Um, so when we want to turn left or right, the light will be on. Um, and also, uh, the box that we design are very compact. It can hold everything together, and it's also portable, so we can transfer the box from one bike to the other. And uh, for our whole system, we only use a 9 volt battery. One of the systems we weren't happy with entirely was the alarm system. Sometimes it would work perfectly and just as expected, and sometimes it would be far too sensitive, and it would trigger itself when it was barely moving, and so anyone bumping into the bike or chaining up their own bike would set it off. And we weren't able to eliminate that um, because we got different results for the same calibration values. So we might need to use more sophisticated filtering techniques. So one of the things we learned as engineers is um, how we implement our solutions. Uh, we actually as a team thought of a solution before we created a problem. And as a result, we wanted to use things that were a bit more complicated than they needed to be. An example would have been the accelerometer for uh, the anti-theft system. In actuality, we didn't need to have that system be so sensitive. We could have easily used a bike pressure seat. And with the system on, if someone's sitting on it, the buzzer would go off. Another example would have been um, using maybe um, brake lever switches as opposed to the accelerometer to signal when the bike needs to brake. That would have been easier and uh, more simpler and of course less likely to fail.